my dear students welcome to epg patshala i am dr mp stija professor retired from the department of library and information science guru nanak dev university amritsar the topic for discussion is the colon classification which is india's greatest and everlasting contribution to the science of library classifications the colon classification conceived and developed from 1924 to 1928 was first published by the madras library association in 33 ranganathan was ranganathan was secretary general of the madras library association which he had founded uh, with his own efforts the latest and the first edition published after the death of ranganathan was the 7th edition 1987 when ranganathan was a student in the year 1923 to 24 at the school of librarianship and archives university college london the ddc was being taught there for practice in classification to the students the ddc being a mark and park system he could assign more than one class number to a document especially in shrining compound and complex objects this defeated the very purpose of classification itself besides this ranganathan also found only nominal representation of non western subjects in the scheme waspish bias in divis system is too well known even today genesis in the genesis of system ranganathan diagnosed that the ddc due to its innovative nature was a classification suited to the 19th century literature in 1924 ranganathan happened to visit selfridge departmental store in london and kindly watched a demonstration of a mechanos toy kit the salesman was making different toys from the same kit by permutation of the blocks strips nuts and bolts that triggered his fertile mind to adapt similar techniques to design different class numbers from subjects concepts to suit the individual documents he visualized that all knowledge is composed of some basic and discrete concepts which could be combined to construct class numbers to specifically suit a particular document instead of assigning it as a predetermined ready made pigeon hole connecting symbols in the forms of punctuation marks served his nuts and bolts it was first published uh, in 1933 by the library association founded in 1928 of which ranganathan was the founder general secretary and rest is a history as this classification brought a great revolution in the history and theory of classification systems dr s r ranganathan whose full name was shali ramamrita ranganathan was born in the year 1892 and he is rightly designated as the father of library movement in india and he was a very prolific innovative writer and he was also designated as the first national research professor in library science by the government of india his exemplary dedication and uncanny insights won him the respect and admiration of his countrymen and peers all over the world his testaments form the bedrock of the current theory of the discipline especially in library classification extensive work on classification that he did is epoch making and created a paradigm next in importance to the work of melville dv and his theories still continue and as useful relevant and form the core of our current knowledge of the subject the colon has evolved sometime slowly and sometime very fast so far its seven editions have been produced from the year 33 to the 1987 it can be divided into three versions in the line of evolution so the first version version 1 that started from the 
1903 to 1950 and it is known as rigidly fisted era version 2 comprises of additions 4 5 and 6 and that is from the year 1950 to 1963 and you can call them the analytico synthetic era where the rigidity of the notation was broken and ranganathan still continued his research to make it a further versatile and what is known as freely fisted classification and that is from the year 1963 when the sixth edition was published till the end of his life in the 1972 and this is known as freely fisted version or freely fisted version is also some sort of a self perpetuating scheme it means that such a classification needs less revision and can keep itself relevant perpetuated even in the light of new subjects that always emerge features of the colon classification the colon classification is a general scheme that it covers the whole universe of knowledge which aims to classify by discipline all subjects and all kinds of documents may be books periodicals reports pamphlets microforms and even electronic media in all kinds of libraries small or big for bibliographic records that is bibliographies or minute literature requiring depth classification and for information retrieval both in manual and electronic systems it is very suitable scheme is described as analytico synthetic which implies that it doesn't go in for making any exhaustive list of all possible subjects known at a time as do other classification systems or it was a rule or the culture in those days it is based entirely on objectively formulated but dynamic theory in the prolegomena to library classification which is a very important book first published in the year 1937 second edition published in the year 1957 and then last edition third edition was published in the year 1967 for designing the classification system ranganathan divided the work into three successive planes three planes of work in designing classifications and this is one of the greatest contribution that ranganathan made to the practice of designing classification systems in 1950 a great breakthrough was achieved in design of classification by dividing it into three succeeding phases called three planes that is idea plane verbal plane and notational plane guided by the overarching five laws of library science the work in each plane is executed by total number of 55 canons 22 principles and 13 postulates and of course ranganathan makes clear distinction between these terms mean they are in hierarchical orders the laws are above everything and last we see the postulates in addition there are 10 devices to improvise or sharpen notation for non existing concepts in the schedules the devices are for number synthesis the work in the idea plane so this is the most important it also called thinking plane policy making or decision making phase or it is also the foundation of the whole work here entire theory is thrashed and is made intellectual analysis of the subject characteristics are selected to break a subject into facets and ultimately into isolates arranged discreetly or one by one granularly and systematically into arrays and chains isolate can be defined as the smallest unit of knowledge in the colon classification whereas a facet is a group of isolates obtained by the application of single characteristic the type and quality of characteristics of division and the order in which these are to be applied is determined by the canons of characteristics these canons lay down that the characteristic chosen as the basis of division should be concrete relevant objective and permanent characteristics should be applied in order of general to specific and one at a time characteristics simply speaking is the criteria of division and ranganathan gave some qualities that how to choose a characteristic for dividing a group into 
smaller groups or a subject into its constituent isolates. After applying characteristics, that is breaking the subject into smaller units isolates, then we have to arrange them into what is known as arrays and chains. In that is a network of topics in a systematic way. Once facets and their isolates are formed with the application of characteristics, the next set of canons is to arrange them in arrays and chains. An array is a set of entities of equal rank arranged in a systematic order. For this, Ranganathan formulated rules for formation of arrays of facets. These are canon of exhaustiveness, that is, an array should be inclusive of all the classes or topics. Nothing should be left out. Canon of exclusiveness lays down that an entity should belong to one and only one array. It will avoid cross-classification. But in online classifications, this canon is of no use. In an online classification, an entity can be placed in two arrays also. That could be useful in retrieval. Helpful sequence canon means that the facets and isolates should be arranged in a predetermined logical sequence, but one which is expected by the majority of the users. That is, the arrangement of entities of equal rank should be in order which is which proves very useful to most of the library users, and that is known as the principle of helpful sequence. The rules or principles in array and chains are that historical events should be chronological, mean they should be applied in the order of their occurrence. While UN member states can be in alphabetical order, that is political, living species may be arranged in the order of their evolution, that is evolutionary order. Chemical elements can be arranged by their atomic numbers or what you call it taxonomic numbers. Ranganathan discovered eight options to arrange entities in a helpful order and which I have already been explained to you. Then chain is a sequence of entities in a constantly decreasing order of their extension that it moves from general to specific. As contrasted from an array, a member of a chain are of unequal order. I mean, they are always in a decreasing order of their extension. Work in the purple plane. Purple plane gives standard technical names in an unambiguous language to the concepts arranged in arrays and chains in the idea plane. Ranganathan's canons for verbal plane lay down that terms should be used to express signs should be free from homonyms and synonyms. There should be one-to-one -one correspondence in concept term relations. That is, one concept should always be expressed by one fixed term. Then he says, the term used for classification system should be made free of homonyms and synonyms and must be expressed and read in their context and mostly should be neutral, not opinionated or critical. Later means term should not be value written. Librarians or the persons who coin terms should be neutral. They should not coin or give names to concept such names which can hurt the feeling of others. Notational plane is the last plane, but it is the most visible one. And Raghunathan expected much from a notational system in terms of its capacity and sophistication to represent complex ideas. He overloaded it with important work, but relegated it as a servant of the idea plane. However, his canons of notation lay down that notation in a class number should be brief, simple, easy to write, remember for a short time, and it should be easy to pronounce also. It should be expressive of subject structure, that it should show the structure of the subject as does show the hierarchy. And above all, it should be hospitable to the new subjects. Later quality in Ranganathan notation is in abundance. And of course, hospitality is the most desirable, most essential quality of any notation in library classification. It is hierarchical, extremely hospitable, which transparently depicts the facets and categories. That is the Ranganathan notation. Above all, Ranganathan's notation is highly mnemonical, even up to the seminal level. For example, 
the concepts unity god world are always denoted by one because they are always unity single diseases and mechanical breakdown will get the same number because at the root they are the same so we'll do cures and therapeutics and repairs in different main classes take one example the term physiology as it occurs in journal biology botany zoology and medicine is always represented by the notation colon 3 and it makes the notation quite mnemonic and easy to remember and use but ultimately the notation of ranganathan is very complex and sometimes it is frightening and it is one of the reason that ranganathan classification has not become popular to show you the digits in the notation in the latest edition seventh edition published in the year 1987 notation comprises of 74 digits out of which 60s are semantic when they denote subjects and 14s are indicator digits and these have been divided into following six species the first species is roman capitals 26 then there is one another greek letter delta another species one only then indo arabic numerals that is 0 to 9 used decimally that these are 10 then roman smalls a to z 23 because i l and o have not been used then of course there are two types of indicator digits having enterizing value and postrising value which comprise of punctuation marks and mathematical symbols they are 11 in numbers and it makes total of 74 digits and it is the largest number of digits in any library classification ranganathan divided the universe of knowledge first into disciplines so it is a disciplinary classification as is the ddc and further uh, it has been divided into main classes and then up to this ranganathan is traditional but ranganathan identified three types of subjects in the universe of knowledge and this analogy seems to have been taken from the chemical substances basic that is elements compound you can call it compound classes or compound subjects and then is complex so basic subjects are main classes unitary subjects basic subjects such as physics economics music law library science and compound subjects are basic subjects with divisions or additional facets for example velocity of light transport economics guitar music or law of marriage and libraries in india are compound subjects and compound subjects are virtually infinite in number and they always increase more and more and lastly complex subjects are mostly interdisciplinary in nature for example mathematics for engineers russian for libraries comparative physiology or geophysics these are complex subjects complex subjects are also called two or more faced subjects a complex subject has two or more phases and these are formed by phase relation ranganathan in the 7th edition has recognized or identified the following six phases these are first general phase and its example is relation between political science and history in this is some sort of unspecified relation or all comprehensive relation bias phase when a subject is inclined towards another for example psychology for doctors or geometry for painters comparison phase when the two subjects are compared to one another and for example physics compared with chemistry or uh, political science compared with public administration difference phase is some sort of corollary of the, of the comparison phase that when you project the dif- differences between two and two subjects then it's known as the difference phase difference between christianity and is- islam or the difference between indian constitution and british constitution then fifth is the tool phase it means when a subject is applied as a tool to explicate or understand or study another subject example is mathematical physics here physics is used as a tool to study physics and lastly 
influencing phase when a subject is influencing the, the exposition of other. The example is influence of Mahatma Gandhi on Barack Obama or influence of Bhagavad Gita on, 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 on in, in, in Hindi, 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 Hindi literature, literature. Main classes in the column classification and their order. Asha Ranganathan laid much emphasis on the order of knowledge and consequently on the arrangement of basic subjects in its column classification. A classification must depict the structure of knowledge he emphasized. First division of knowledge in the CC is into traditional disciplines, which he arranges in the order of their evolution as academic studies, namely sciences and technologies, which were first evolved in the universe of knowledge, then came humanities, and lastly, the social sciences. Further, we can elaborate the depiction of main classes within these three major disciplines. Science and technology, these are represented from A to M. And within this are science and mathematics, they are represented from A to F. These include mathematics, physics, engineering, chemistry, chemical technology, then G to H are biology and ge geology. I and J, K, botany are agriculture and zoology. L and M are medicine and useful arts. And here ends the science and technology section. Further comes humanities. And in the humanities, at the top is Delta spiritual experience and mysticism. In fact, it is top of uh, all of the sciences. N, O, and P, fine arts, literature, and languages. Q, R, S, R, religion, philosophy, and, and psychology. Then social sciences are represented from T to Z. T is education. U and V are geography and history respectively. W, X, Y, Z are political science, economics, sociology, and law in order. And all these subjects and, and disciplines Ranganathan represented through a diagram which is already very famous. On the base of the diagram are the general classes and the newly emerging subjects just as library science, hotel management, universe of knowledge, publishing and so on. These are denoted by the small alphabets or numerals A to 9. On the left are the sciences and technologies. At the top is the vertex delta and then on the right hand side of the triangle are N to T, these are humanities and then T to Z are social sciences. Facet analysis. The colon classification is mostly known by its facet analysis. The term was coined by Ranganathan and the CC is based upon the facet analysis. Analysis, of course, means to breaking a subject into its constituent facets. Facet analysis, as developed by Ranganathan, is the core of the CC philosophy and methods. It has revolutionized classification theory and practice, which has been adopted by all the later classification systems. No class number or compound or complex subject is available ready-made. And uh, every class number has to be synthesized with first facet analysis and then with facet synthesis as prescribed by the facet formula. Eight steps for practical classification. To assign class number to a document, Raghunathan gave some steps which are logical and you have to move one by one to learn the practice of classification. And these steps have been eight concrete subjects which turn a raw title as it appears on the document given by the publisher and the author into a class number based upon the subject contents and its other bibliographic features. First of all, specific subject of a document has to be determined for which there are no specific rules. Ranganathan calls it intuitive or trial and error act. It indeed requires flair. Nevertheless, a specific subject is to be determined from the title, subtitle, preface, table of contents, or even by reading the text. 
the raw title may be augmented mean enhanced by keywords or phrases if necessary to fully indicate the subject of the document next we separate the subject proper from the common isolates and which represent the tangible elements of the document or viewpoint of the author it is also a phase of analysis then in the process is determined the main classes in which the subject falls main classes and other basic classes are postulated by the system these are the given given by the system itself they are not determined by the or uh, postulated by the classifier fundamental categories that's another important contribution of ranganathan after the specific subjects determination starts the phase of analysis into pmest categories ranganathan has suggested identification of categories in a subject in the order from time to personality that is moving from facile entity easy entity to the most elusive one so first of all we will identify time in a subject and then one by one lastly come to personality categories tend to evade definition because it's difficult to define them but they are not difficult to be identified their nature is somewhat elusive these are still postulated and require much experience to recognize them for example the category personality occurs in the main classes yet it is difficult to say what generally it is nature of categories varies from main class to main class of course their deceptive nature is clear from the fact that what had been the energy category in additions 4 to 6 has become all of a sudden matter category in the seventh edition and in practical classification we start with identifying time category and then come down to p via identifying category space energy and matter so this is the identification of categories after identification of categories we have to put them into the formula pmest but within the pmest the facets may occur in what ranganathan calls round then levels recurrence of a category is more than one facet is accounted for by the postulate of rounds and levels for example in class o literature the category personality occurs four times that is the language form of the document author of the document or work or title each at a different level and all these are personality categories in o literature the phenomena of recurrence of categories is tackled by the postulate of rounds and levels ranganathan postulated that space and time occur in the last round of the facet formula categories p that is personality matter and energy can occur in various rounds and at various levels within the round except e which has only rounds and no level energy always completes a round facet formula or citation order now the question comes how to arrange facets in rounds and levels for that ranganathan gave the principle for facet sequence facet formula depicts syntactical relations among facets to mechanize the arrangement of categories and their scattered facets ranganathan after a long trial finally settled on general and all encompassing facet formula popularly known as pmest personality matter energy space and time rounds of categories are arranged by the principle of dependency which ranganathan formulated as wall picture principle since there cannot be any mural without a wall so wall is made the first facet the master wall picture principle has various corollaries formulated in such axiomatically worded principle as whole organ principle that is whole part of relationship and the cow cow principle principle of appurtenance to arrange levels of facets the more complex act and action actor tool principle is obtained by logical mix of the above principles it may be noted that this citation order is in tune with the latest crg facets formula or the order of facets given by the crg the facet formula of crg is as follow things kinds parts materials properties processes operations and agents then of course space and time principle of inversion the colon classification follows the principle of inversion 
first used by the UDC. In the PMS citation order, categories are arranged in the order of their decreasing concrete net. That is, T personality is the most concrete and T time is the most abstract. On the shelves or in the classified database, however, the order of objects is from general to specific, that is from abstract to concrete. This order is achieved by ingeniously fixing the ordinal value of indicator digits. For example, ordinal value of indicator digit T is less than that of space and so on. So, this is known as the principle of inversion. APOPA pattern. The term APOPA is the acronym. Standing, A standing for alien, P standing for penumbral, U standing for umbral, P again for penumbral, and A for alien. The general APOPA pattern is achieved by postulating two kinds of common oscillates. Enterizing common oscillates, ACIs, and posterizing common oscillates, PCI. Common oscillates are like the standard subdivisions of DDC or common auxiliaries of the UDC, which are attachable to any class irrespective of its specificity. The Apupa pattern unique to the column classification is one of the logical, pedagogical, useful and beautiful arrangement of documents on the shelves. It is some sort of a method which goes from uh, general to specific as the child learns. All the books on the shelves which uses column classification are arranged in a very uh, a pupa pattern if, which, is, which can be visible when one student uh, browses the shelves. Here, A, alien, is a related subject. For example, for B, mathematics, A is a alien. P is a penumbral subject which has less of documents and these make uh, approach documents to the core collection or the core subject. Here, for example, dictionaries, encyclopedias, bibliographies of the subjects are concerned. Then U, umbral, which is uh, marked with uh, dark uh, color means the core subjects. Then again on the P are subjects with less uh, subject content, but these are meant for advanced students, say let us say the research on the subject, centers on the subject and so on. Then A is another subject. Similarly, the pattern goes on weaving such pattern or uh, such waves on the shelves of the library. And it is considered as one of the very good and very thoughtful contribution of Dr. S. Aranganathan. Analysis of subject into facets and isolates is followed by synthesis of facets. In a document, first subject per se is to separated from common isolates denoted by Roman smalls and added after the subject facet with their own indicator digits. These are, for example, a bibliography, K encyclopedia, and periodical. These are added with the connecting symbols that is double inverted comma in the seventh edition and bring the document to its anterior position that is in the front position. Posterizing common isolates are three types personality, matter, and energy. For example, calculation, critical study, or educational research in learned societies are posterizing common athletes. These are added with their respective indicator digits, namely comma, semicolon, or colon, respectively, and take the document to the backward position. Some examples are given here. You can see them. Lastly, we come to the index of the CC, its revision, policy or machinery, and its use. The sixth edition had many subject indexes, but the seventh has none attached to it. Later in the year 2002, Syndex, a machine readable index to the seventh edition, was published on a CD ROM with the UNESCO's software Venices. Further, despite being projected as India's national scheme of classification, it is not a widely used system in India. The DTC outranks any other system in popularity in our country. Though no register of users has been maintained for the use of colon classification, but according to a very favorable estimate, some 24% of the libraries were using this system in India in 1960s. No new libraries adopting it. 
CC class numbers are also given in bibliographic elements in the entries of the Indian National Bibliography, that is INB, published by uh, National Library Kolkata. In summary and conclusion, we can have a look at the contribution that it has made and the prospects that lie before it. The theory of the colon classification is in fact and aptly considered as theory of classification in general all over the world and which is taught in many library schools the world over. The contribution of the CC lies in its facet analysis technique, the concept of fundamental categories and hordes of practical uh, postulates and hospitality devices it provides, uh, scientific guidelines for construction of new classification systems. Many depth and special classification systems have been designed using the CC methods. It can be used to design other indexing vocabularies such as CSRI, CSRO facets or depth classifications for micro subjects. Its facet analysis is immediately helpful in query formulation for better recall and precision of output. Some of the search engines or web directories are invariable use Ranganathan's approach with good result in retrieving on the web. System has not been revised since 1987. Even the last revision came a proper. Colon classification brought fame and prestige to Indian library science. Ranganathan's work inspired his immediate colleagues, but his movement went no further in innovations and in India. Methods of colon classification indeed have been borrowed and refined by the systems like the DDC, UDC and BC2 and therein it lives in the theory of general classification. But still one feels some national level organization and professional bodies should make a planned and combined efforts to revise and popularize it. It is sad to say that the Indian library profession has not preserved and perpetuate its pride heritage.